and go. Let me give you one more example of a Venn diagram, considering that all of the other ones I've worked with haven't included any O statements. Recall that O statements are some P or not Q. So we'll do one more example incorporating an O statement. And this one I won't bother with words, we'll cut straight to uh, symbols. Suppose my structure is no P or Q. My, my uh, minor premise is some P or R. Therefore, we're going to ask if we can conclude R, can, can we conclude some R, R not Q. Now the mood of this one is E, I, O, and our figure is 3 because our middle term is the subject of both major and minor term. So our mood, just write it down, is E, I, O, and its figure is 3. Now we'll Venn diagram test this one. Our concentric circles are back, and my back is to you, that's not good for style. We have our P, Q, and R are represented. Now we're going to diagram no P or Q first, as that is our universal premise. Recall that 2 and 5 are the area that intersects of P and Q. We just said no P or Q, so we're going to shade that in as the null set. Now, where to place our X, since our second one is, is, a, uh, is a statement of sum, a particular affirmation. Sum P R R. Let's see, so it's going to be sum P that's also part of the class of things R. Here we go. Some P or R. Now, if I hadn't already shaded out 5, there would have been some uncertainty if it went in 4, 5, or both 4 and 5. I would have had to place it on the line. But because I diagram my universal first, I already expressed that we have the knowledge that it can't be in sector 5. So the only place to put it is, is 4. So I'm done with my diagram, now I get to read whether or not we can draw the conclusion. Some R are not Q. So let's look at our X. We have some R. Wow. And it's not a member of Q. This one's bad. Some R, and it's not Q. Now, I invite you to try some of these uh, on your own to see if you are uh, understanding these. <clears throat> Certainly a good idea. Till then, thank you.